since I've left college, which was decades ago, I I can see what all my friends are doing, you know, and I, I can see them staying in jobs that, that just crush their spirit. And it, it, it's obvious to me. Now, they think I'm crazy. This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but we need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today, to start turning your dreams into a reality. Hey, you. Yeah, just you. So this is an episode in which I don't know what's going to happen to you after listening to this because I can't really predict that. But my most educated guess is that it will definitely change the way you perceive life. We talk about a number of things in this episode, everything from perception to beliefs, to happiness, to success, and just, well, scratching your own itch and being curious. And this episode means the world to me. It really does. To have Tom on, this was a huge milestone for me. And I really appreciate you by supporting me just by listening. But if you feel like you could, you know, do something for someone and you just want to do something because, well, you feel like doing it, leave me a comment, leave a review, and I'd love to read it off on the next episode. I haven't gotten any new reviews yet. I'm not saying that as like, oh, poor me. I'm just saying I haven't gotten any new reviews that I can read off as of late. So I'd love to get in communication with you. And have a conversation that's worth creating to ultimately create a life worth living. So, with that being said, also, if you're trying to create something, I'd love to invite you to this awesome opportunity of scratching your own itch Facebook group. It's all about creating a life worth living and asking ourselves the questions for a quality life. And this show, this episode in particular, is totally off script. I didn't prepare all these questions that I wanted to ask him like I usually do. I just wanted to let go. And uh, you might find out that, hey, that might be the way you want to operate in the world. Just let go. So if you're a perfectionist, this episode is for you. If you're someone who's really trying to get better at everything in life, this episode's for you. And if you struggle with anxiety and ADHD, which the doctors like to throw on to people. Not saying that I'm diagnosing with you because I don't have that professional license to do that, but uh, if you do deal with that shiny red ball syndrome, this episode's for you. So please listen in. Let me know what you think by sending me an email to logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com, and I'd love to help you create a life worth living. So, without further ado, enjoy my interview with Tom Azaker. Hey, you. Yeah, just you. So, the thing is, 
I'm deeply, deeply obsessed with a person's beliefs because beliefs give you the ability to believe that you're good enough to actually be a writer of a book or be a leader of the company that you work for or believe that you're a great actor or a lucrative creator or destined for greatness. So I've said before that the most profitable skill that one can develop is beliefs, for good or for bad, doesn't matter. But your system of beliefs does matter. And there's a book by the name of I Am Keats, which I don't want to actually tell you what it will do for you other than just that you need to go read it. If you're someone who is searching for the code, that one secret, to unlock everything for you, then you definitely need to go check this book out, I Am Keats. My little short comment on the book is this. I Am Keats reassured me of why. I am obsessed with beliefs. And it's because, well, I've always tried to feather with going against the grain on mostly everything I've done. For example, if someone tells me to zig, I will indefinitely zag. And conversely is true. If someone tells me that the only way to be a successful actor is by playing the numbers game and auditioning a bunch, I'm definitely going to rebel and find a way of not auditioning and being told, oh, you don't really fit the mold. But, you know, try again next year. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't like leaving things to chance. And here's the thing. I'm speaking with the author today of I Am Keats, Mr. Tom Azaker. And this is not your average author. His book will shake up your world because it shook up mine. Not saying that, you know, hey, this book is going to change your life. But this book has the potential to, yes, change your life. So if you're wondering who Tom Azaker is, here's his professional bio. Mr. Aziger writes and teaches about radically new practices and ideas for success in times of uncertainty and change. He is the author of critically acclaimed books, including The Business of Belief, and he's the creator of I Am Keats, a philosophy focused on transformation, a popular speaker. He lectures to corporations, associations, and university audiences around the world and works confidently with executives and management teams at a number of top companies. And honestly, this just scratches the very surface of who Tom really is because Tom, trust me, is someone that is completely different in the best way possible. So without further ado, Tom, thank you so much for coming on Scratch Your Own Itch. All right. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Ah, no. Absolutely. Dude, I, uh, I can't believe. Still, it's hard for me to use the word believe because now I have a different uh, perspective on the word believe after reading your book. But um, I don't want to be like that, you know, that podcast that just goes and says, hey, like, oh, my God, you're so amazing. Like, <laughs> I really want to dive. I really... I really want to dive deep with uh, who you are as a person and, and also the ideals of what you are doing in your, in your own professional life and world and um, what you're all about. Let's dive in. Let's scratch the itch. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I like to get a little vulnerable on this show. So um, where is that uh, thing in your life that you're stuck with? Um, either in the past or present or the thing that you kind of had to go through in order to find yourself and who, who you want to be in the world. Thing I'm stuck with, huh? That's, yeah, that's, that's a good question because I don't really, yeah, I don't really feel that. I mean, the thing that I'm really probably stuck with that I haven't figured out completely yet how to overcome, even though I'm aware of it, is I have that same propensity that you do. I 
I have some kind of rebellious nature to authority figures inside of me. And it's something that really pushes my button anytime somebody tells me what I have to do or that I can't do something. That, that seems to set me off prior to my conscious mind kicking in and really thinking about it. So I'd say that that's the thing that has hung around with me for a long, long time. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to shake it, but I, I can see it. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> I, uh, I love it. And I know exactly where you're coming from. Do you think that that has created less opportunities in your professional world? Or do you think it, it's actually uh, separated you in a good way? Yeah, no. It, if you look at opportunities as new experiences um, that shift your direction in life, then my inability to toe the line and to be, you know, whoever the, uh, the scripted role that people try to put me in Anytime I've run into any type of situation like that, I have just stopped doing it. So by stopping doing it, it threw me off into another direction. So if anything, it has provided more opportunity to me uh, during the years. I love it. I love it because I think there, the thing that what I love about your work is uh, – <laughs> You have this way of just going, you know, this is what everyone thinks is the way to reach happiness, right? Like we need to go this certain route and that is, uh, I don't want to say like the original story, but yeah, it's go to a nice, nice college, get really good grades, and then maybe you'll network with people while you're in college and make connections through, I don't know, by doing everything that everyone wants you to do. But you say, no, like I'm just going to do things because I need to do them. Or like when, <laughs> when you wrote a book, for example, I am Keats, people are like, why, why did you write this book? You're like, I, I kind of just, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, <laughs> Tom, but you, you, you kind of just said like, I just wrote the book. <laughs> like I wanted to write a book and, uh, <laughs> that's what I did. I just wrote a freaking yeah. book. You know, it's, it's really <laughs> interesting when I have conversations with people and they ask me, why I do things and why I don't do things in life. And when I say to them, and, and I'm being genuine when I say this, when I say to them, I do the things I want to do and the things I don't want to do, I don't do them. And that's kind of it. That's kind of how I make decisions. People look at me like I'm crazy or something. And I think it's because the majority of people, especially in the Western world, they're doing <laughs> things they don't want to do. And to me, that's crazy to live a life where you get up in the morning and you do things you don't want to do. And then you get up the next day and you do it again. That to me is insane. Instead of people looking at me as insane, I look at that as insane. All right. So this is, let, let's really tackle this. Let's right. really tackle this because. The thing is, is, okay, we live in a world where, like, if you're getting up at 5 a.m., uh, you're usually correlated with being successful, you run a company, uh, you're you, you're worldwide renowned speaker or whatnot, but for someone to actually maybe do the flip side of that is they go to sleep at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m., and uh, they run their life on their own terms, and they... Uh, also eat when they want to. They don't go to meetings. They have meetings on the phone when they feel like having a meeting. Um, that to me, ideally seems like the better life to live, which I try to live. But everyone goes against that. Most people, I don't want to like generalize, but most people believe that um, that is just not the way to do things. That's not the way to operate in our system. And and we get we get nailed down as a as a person that's not good at doing anything because they don't want to listen to anybody, <laughs> but it's not that I think it's just, it's just like stepping into who you are as a person. And that's what your book did to me. It's kind of like just stepping into the shoes of 
not like a way to think, but a thing, uh, a way of how to think about struggles that do come up in your life. And when people push against those grains to just go, okay, this is just a, a thinker who is, uh, is believing inside the box instead of just, there's no box at all. There's no even out of the box thinking there just is, is the way you think. And that's good yeah, enough. Look, the reason people, when pe- you say people are looking at you and, you and they're saying, you know, you, you just, you don't know what you're doing. You, you haven't figured it out, whatever it is. What they're upset with is that they're following whatever society and culture has kind of led them to believe whatever the story is, the movie in their mind that they're living as the main character. And you're doing something different. And that really bothers people, probably because deep down inside, they're saying, I wish I could get up when I want to. I wish I could have a meeting when I want to. I wish I could eat whenever I want to. And to see you doing that, what they'll do is they'll point to some of the trappings that staying in their little movie gets them like a house or a car or a vacation or a boat. But those aren't the things that bring you meaning and fulfillment in the present. And that's why people keep chasing these things, because they think someday when they get there, wherever there is, because there's no there, there's only now. I need the, not, the there for everyone is the same. It's, it's like in the ground. So they have this illusion. I'm going to get there and then, aha, I'll be able to say, screw everybody, I can do what I want now. Well, you know, what you're doing is you're saying, screw everybody, you can do what you want right now. And they don't like hearing that because you haven't lived a life of doing what you don't want to do. And that bothers them in some subconscious way. (laughs) It really does. Like, I actually love the. I love the books like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mark Manson's book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, or um, have you ever read uh, uh, Sarah Knight's book, um, How to Just Not Give a Fuck? <laughs> I, 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 I guess I like those books because they're finally just letting someone uh, be who they are. Like, and, 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 I don't I don't think everyone needs permission to do something, but I think at certain ages, like if you think back on your lifetime, I'm sure there was a point in your life, and I could be wrong, but a point in your life where you needed permission to just do everything. Maybe it was a time when you were 20, 21, 22, I'm not sure, but where you needed this uh as your as your book uh refers to uh this sort of outside authority telling you, okay, you're now ready to actually cut down the tree or you're actually ready to write the book that you need to write rather than just writing bad books and then getting better at it through time. (laughs) And so I guess my main question is, how did you develop this overriding permission to just give yourself the ability to go, I'm going to write a book because I feel like writing a book. I'm going to start a company because I feel like starting a company. I'm going to have a TED Talk on no TED Talks actually change my life. And watching them uh, will do nothing for you. That's sort of like an incredible mastery of just being you. (laughs) I don't actually know. Um, I've never really sat and tried to deconstruct what has allowed me to do this? I mean, perhaps it has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, I was, um, I was the baby of a very large immigrant family. And my, my father married, my my father was from the East coast from, from outside of Boston. My mom lived in the deep South. Um, very religious, uh, Southern Baptist, Pentecostal. So I got to see, and this was back in the 60s, you know, 60s, 70s, traveling back and forth, where half of my family was in, in this one culture, one place, the other half was somewhere else. So I, I had a up-close and personal lens 
on the fact that all of this bullshit is made up in our heads. There are people that believe this thing. There are people that believe that thing. There are people that live here. There are people that live there. People that eat this. People that eat that. People that live in mansions. People that live in uh, huts. And I saw all of this. And these were all my family members. And I, through that lens, said in my own mind, I don't see where any of these beliefs are what makes someone happier than someone else. It's something else because I've got relatives that have nothing that are happier than my relatives that have everything that are, it's all over the place. So I realized at that point that there there is no path, that the path is your path and that you have to make it. So that illusion was destroyed for me really, really early on. Not consciously. I mean, I was a kid. But subconsciously, I could see that there were no dots to connect and some place to get to because I witnessed it. So where did, where do you think though? uh, So you've got this way of thinking of like, I am, did you still think in the I am Keats capacity of like, this i am keats is is uh, let's uh, I, I guess i'll put down what i am keats really means to me i'm not sure okay. what it means to you I'm sure i could read your book and go hey like i know i know this book uh inside and out but i don't uh so i'm gonna say that i am keats to me was you know i don't need permission i don't need anyone's permission i can just be keats or coleridge where coleridge is going hey you do need permission. You need more. You know, need more knowledge. Uh, where is it in your life where this cool ridge started to just uh, go? I mean, you kind of you kind of unpacked it, but I want to get deeper. Of like, did you see anybody in your own life, like a mentor or maybe a model, go? I'm cool ridge, and look at what I've actually received from just operating in a capacity of like. I care, but I don't care so much that it's going to ruin my life and, and, and set me into deep sorrow and ruin my day. It's going to ruin my moment because, well, someone didn't agree with me right then and there. Yeah, look, most of... I don't know if yeah, that makes yeah, sense makes at sense. all. Look, <laughs> I've also, you know, since I've left college, which was decades ago, I, I can see what all my friends are doing. You know, and I, I can see them staying in jobs that, that just crush their spirit. And it, it, it's obvious to me. Now, they think I'm crazy because they think that stability and security is more important than living with passion. So I, I see the distinction between those two things, right? It, it's, not, it's not lost on me. But I also see that popular culture is trying to get people to, God, I don't even know what metaphors you want to use. Hack your life, gamify your life, use your conscious mind and, and goals and objectives and your phone and task list and all this other bullshit mm. in order to try to optimize something that cannot be optimized. You can't do it. Life is dynamic. It's moving all the time. So what you've got to do is you have to have the passion and the confidence to just throw yourself out into life and see what happens. I'm not saying don't get the skills you need, but don't look at the skills that other people have and say to yourself, how can I possibly do that? These people aren't special. They went and read books, listened to podcasts, consulted with consultants. They're nothing special. You can do anything they can do if you have the physical and mental capacity to do it. I can't play pro basketball because I'll never be able to jump that high and dunk a ball. I know that about myself. But I sure as hell can get up on a stage and give a TED Talk because there's nothing special about anybody that gets up on a stage and gives a TED Talk. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, because it comes down to just what are your resources and what can you do with those resources? And I think that kind of does separate a person from 
the rest is uh, a, a person's set of beliefs. And uh, I'd love to go into your definition of beliefs and uh because i i know the the example that you put in the book and now i will tell you that i've told this story now to four different people about the the stake and <laughs> and one's beliefs and a guy uh that you said uh you know hey what's this belief thing so i want to go into that um what's what is your set of beliefs and how do you change one's beliefs or a company's beliefs right and I know that's a loaded question, so we could talk about that for the next hour. No, but, no it's okay. You know, do a short no, summary okay. of like, it. I wrote a book on belief called The Business of Belief. So I, I understand belief inside and out. I know what's going on with it. Beliefs, which are a little bit different than facts, right? So beliefs are, are basically our working assumptions about something. So we have an assumption that um, if I take vitamin D, that it's going to help me if I live in a climate that's dark during the winter because I can't get sun. All of this stuff based on information that we're getting from the, from the external world and based on a desire that we have, personal desire that we have. So if we have a particular desire to be healthy and somebody's telling us omega-3 or whatever, we create this belief through this information processing in order to get whatever it is that we want, the outcome. So our desires are what drive our beliefs. So as far as my beliefs go, I take all my beliefs really lightly. If someone says to me, what do you believe? And I say, oh, I believe in, uh, that eggs are good for you. And they come back with some kind of scientific evidence, double blind study, hundreds of thousands of patients, and that says eggs will kill you. And I read it and it makes sense to me. And it's a logical process, a scientific process. I don't care anymore to eat eggs. But for people that really love eggs or for egg farmers, people that have this driving desire to want eggs to be good, they will find their own personal reason to discount that evidence and to say, I don't believe it. It's a conspiracy. Who came up with this study? You see, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I can eat anything, wear anything, drive anything, live anywhere. It does not matter to me. So if you give me evidence that makes sense to me, then I will just drop my belief and pick up a new one. That's how I look at beliefs. <laughs> this is just, uh, I'm sure there is that person right now that's uh, like so torn at this and uh, is kind of boggled right now because I know what it's like to get, it's kind of like the matrix, right? You see the matrix and then you go, okay, wow. Uh, now I'm just, uh, I'm doing exactly what I didn't want to do, which, which is, is question everything. And then questioning everything doesn't make you a human being anymore. It, it makes you a human thinker. But what I love most about what the, every single interview I've listened to you made me realize our problem is not that we don't know enough. It's that we don't do enough. So I think that what your book does is it allows someone to actually transform into being a human doing instead of a human mm -hmm. being, uh, which is, I think, hard to do in a big gulp. Like, you don't take down an elephant by eating it with one gulp. You take it down by small little bites. What would you recommend for someone to start changing themselves into that human doing rather than the human being that needs more knowledge in order to actually start doing something that they want to do with their life? The first, honestly, the first thing is awareness. Unless you understand that the way you perceive the world is all coming from whatever you've put in your head. So your memories are what's basically giving you your perspective of the world. People with different memories have different ways of perceiving the world. That's just how it works. And the good news is 
you can change your perceptions with new experiences. Because as soon as you have a new experience, you now have new memories, which give you a new perspective. But unless you have new experiences, nothing will change. I don't care how many books you read, how many podcasts you listen to, how many TED Talks you watch. Nothing changes unless you experience it because by experiencing it, you now know whether the feelings you're going to get in the future are feelings that you can rely on or feelings that are bullshit. But you've got to do it. You can't read a book that says, don't be afraid about giving a speech. Everybody gives speeches. Books won't do anything. When you get up on a stage and you give a couple of speeches and you realize, oh, nothing happened. Holy shit, I'm still here. I'm not dead. No, you know, as soon as you do that, your memories now say, I don't have to fear this anymore. But you can read about, you know, if you're afraid of snakes, you can read about, don't be afraid of snakes. This snake's a gentle snake doesn't do a thing to you until you go out and pick up a snake. And that's, I think, what people, especially people hooked on the Internet today, believe that by going in here and reading these little articles and these little books all day long, that somehow it's changing their feelings in their mind. It is not doing it. It's just throwing more information up there. Change your experiences, which changes your memories, which changes your feelings, which then will change your entire life. Oh, God, I love that so much. <laughs> I'm going to like listen because I know that along the way of things, I'm going to forget this stuff. Uh, and I'm going to go, hey, I need to learn more or I need, uh, hey, I need to uh, do some more research. But you're so right that it's, it's based off of what I think, I like to use this word now, certainty. Mm -hmm. Like the only reason why someone ever uh, actually wants to buy a product is because they're certain that it's going to give them a certain feel, right? A, a particular feeling. Um, or the way someone goes, I'm going to actually start dating this person because I know that I'll, I'll, I'll feel a certain way because of the way that I, I you know, I'm. I'm associated with this person. Yeah, but that's all a belief. But what it comes down to. Belief, right? Think about yeah. it. It's not certainty. That's it. What you're doing is your, your brain is craving certainty in order to eliminate any kind of risk. So it's me making up a story so that you have the courage to now go do what you want to do. I'm trying to tell you, you don't need these stories because there's nothing about dating or writing a book or giving a speech or any of that that's going to kill you. This is your mind doing it to you. It's saying, don't go tell her that, that she's cute or tell what, whatever, because your social identity, your social self, that story about you says you might get rejected. And in your mind, being rejected by another human being is the same thing to you as a, a hungry lion eating you in the jungle. Because back in those days when all these feelings were hardwired into our minds, to be rejected by the tribe was sure death, just like being attacked by a tiger. So that's the feeling that you get. And that's the thing that you have to overcome. And the only way to overcome that feeling is to do it. It goes into your memory, and then your memory will inform you the next time and say, dude, you got nothing to worry about. And that's why you see these people and you say, wow, they've got so much confidence. They don't have confidence. They have experience. Those are two different things. <laughs> so you're saying you, you can't really teach anybody confidence. You, can, you can't really teach anybody anything. You can only uh, give them a, a guide. Or I don't even know what it would be called. I guess a a manuscript to sort of go. All you need to do is look, do. Man, I, yeah, I try. don't even know what. Because look, everybody is looking. Everybody that I talk to, anyway, they look for like how a how to. Give it to me. Give me the how to. What are the steps? What's the checklist? And honestly, and I don't do this with a lot of people because 
I, I know how sensitive people are. They just do not like to be pushed. But if I can sense another human spirit in the world that wants to wake up and that wants to experience life fully, and I can feel that they have what it takes, I'll push them. And that's how I get, you know, how I do it anyway, is I get people to push past these things that they think that they can't do or that they think that they're not. And if they keep coming back for more, I'll keep pushing them. But other than that, I don't have a checklist. You know, it just doesn't exist because it's in you. That tension between safety and security in following that inner voice, that essence, that deep psyche that you have, right? So you've got that, those two voices and they're battling with you all the time. One wants to take care of you and the other wants to experience. It's up to you to learn how to listen to those because they're never going to go away. They're going to always be there. They're neighbors in your mind. So once you can become aware of them, understand their motivations. They're not good and bad. They have different motivations. Then you can learn to negotiate with them. But see, it's all personal. Because you can wake up tomorrow and do everything that you were doing today and feel totally at home with yourself, at peace. Because your perspective shifted. Does, does that make sense? It's a complete shift of perspective. That was kind of the message of the Wizard of Oz. See, Dor Dorothy yeah. didn't like living on the farm. She hated it. But the tornado whisked her away. She learned that everything that she really wanted was inside of her. She wakes up at the same place that she didn't like, and she says, there's no place like home. And she didn't mean there's no place like home, Kansas. What she meant was there's no place like home, my inner being. I'm confident with myself now. Now I know how to live. <laughs> yes. I, I love the other uh, example you've given is um, in uh, the Christmas story. Yeah, where I mean, it's a little bit of a different of a perspective, but it's that perspective of uh, you know when the the mom throws on like fourteen thousand layers on the little <laughs> oh, kid yeah. just so he can get to school on uh, you know get to school safe and sound, but the kid can't even move. <laughs> but she doesn't care about the way he feels. No, at she's all. trying to protect him. She right? just cares exactly. Yep. And she, exactly. And then, so I think what I know I'm guilty of doing is, is, uh, trying to protect myself all the time. Uh, trying to go like, Hey, like if I buy this, I better be certain that it's going to give me this reward. Or if I join this group of people, if I buy into this coaching program or buy into this ma mastermind, I better be, but rather than just like going, Hey, like change your perspective. Try it out, experiment. If you fail at it, good. Now you got an awesome story to tell later exactly. on. Uh, which I just, I think that this mindset allows people to just do things without too much thinking about it. And uh, <laughs> which uh, overthinking is what created anxiety for me. No. <laughs> and I love that you laugh no, on this. No, I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you see it. Don't you see? It's the idea that you can think. Think your way through life that has everybody all screwed up. It's you experience your way through life. So when you say, well, if I join this mastermind group, am I going to get the benefit? And should, if I invest this, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. If something inside of you is saying to do it for some reason that's driven by this inner spirit of yours, you do it, then you see what happens because you don't know what's going to happen. You might meet somebody there that introduces you to somebody else that spins you off in this direction. 
It's all a complete unknown. The only thing I can tell you that's unknown, if you don't experience, nothing will happen. That's exactly right. Nothing, nothing will happen. Uh, <laughs> which is which is what we want, but we don't want, right? Like we, that's right. That's the paradox. I don't that's personally. Good. That's the paradox. The, that's isn't it? it's we don't want anything to happen, do we? We don't want anything unknown to happen, anything confusing, anything bad. We don't want any of that. Therefore, we won't pick anything unknown. So we try to get everything to be known and certain and safe and comfortable. And you know what? That's not where you learn anything. So true. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's like trying to set up a, a system in which you guarantee yourself a certain outcome when the, the clock stops ticking. <laughs> And all of a sudden, you have to say goodbye. And uh, let's face it, that's it's a hard reality to accept. But the reality to accept is that you are who you are based off of the story you tell yourself. And I love that you go into that. And I love that even more so, you can actually change your personality with the very story that you do tell yourself. Oh. Uh, and that is something. I think there's is, something. I think there's well, something I, well, more powerful than that. Don't what is tell that? Tell yourself any story. Just look at yourself and say oh. to yourself, "I am energy. I am pure potential, and I'm like every other human being who's energy and pure potential." So everything that I've done in the past have been choices that I've made, place, time, for whatever reason, circumstances, whatever, that has nothing to do with what I want to do today. What I want to do today is what I want to do today. There's no story. There's no backstory. There's no history. There's no meaning. If I feel that I want to go become a doctor and I'm 70 years old, I'm going to go to school for four more years. I'm going to become a doctor and I'm going to be a 74 year old doctor. And I don't give a shit about the past, all the stories everybody else is telling. I care about what I'm driven to do right now. Because why not? But see, that's not what we do. We tell ourselves stories. This is who I am. This is where I grew up. This is how tall I am. This is the color of my skin. This is my sexual preference. This is. That's all bullshit. That's all surface level shit that society and culture have put on you in order to put you in a story that makes them comfortable. Because they like it when everything makes sense. The minute something doesn't make sense, it makes everybody crazy. You don't have to make sense to other people in the world. You have to live passionately from the inside out while you're here and then see what happens. And anyone that you go online and you look at these memes that people send all over the place, Oscar Wilde said this, this guy said that, all of those people were rejected. They became great because they lived from their inside out instead of from the outside in. That's why there are memes about them. But we forget that. Because we don't want to feel that tension that comes with doing things that aren't acceptable by everyone around us. Whether it's parents, whether it's the people at work, it doesn't matter who it is. We're always concerned about what all these other people think. You don't need to be concerned. Do you think, I'm just deeply curious about this. Do you think, though, someone can fall into the shiny red ball syndrome by following this way of living, going, oh, I just feel like doing this now. I feel like doing this now. Uh, I'm going to do this now. Yeah, do you know I what do, I mean? But, but look, here's the thing. When you get in tune with that inner voice, 
that inner voice is not some haphazard uh, thrill seeker. That voice is driven by curiosity, by compassion for other people, by creativity. When you become in tune with that voice, the voice is not saying, ah, let's just go here and, and, and we'll just jump off cliffs. That's not what it is because the voice will say to you, well, what does jumping off a cliff have to do with being curious? How is that being compassionate? And what the hell are we creating by jumping off a cliff? So that's not your inner voice. That's some thrill-seeking voice that's trying to get you out of your head for a while so you don't have to deal with the tensions of life. If you're listening to your inner voice, you are going to be dealing with the tensions of life because you're going to be doing something driven from your inside that somehow is going to be conflicting with this voice on the, on the other side of your head that's telling you you're not going to be safe, you're not going to be accepted, how are you going to make money, maybe it'll never pay for itself, who do you think you are, you've never written a book, you, you don't know anything about acting, you shouldn't be writing a screenplay, what do you know about Hollywood, you don't live in L.A. All of that nonsense, if you're feeling the tension while you're listening to your inner voice, you're doing the right thing. But if there's no tension, I think I'll just go backpack across Europe. No tension. That's not your inner voice talking. That's some escapist voice that's saying, let's go have some fun for a while. This is just, <laughs> yes, just yes, 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 yes. Uh, what I think, though, someone that's listening to this right now may be thinking is, okay, okay, I'm going to actually try to accept what they're saying right now because <laughs> this is a different way of thinking. Yep. This is a different way of operating, operating within the world, right? It's a right? different way of being, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And so with that, this new set of behaviors that someone might adopt, what is the first thing that you would love to experiment with or, or, or give yourself a, a new itch to scratch, as I say? Uh, what, would you, what would be a new venture that someone could take right now to actually get themselves to learn that, hey, like these new experiences that I, I in, incur are actually, for better or worse, the better option maybe not the best option but the better option <laughs> yeah i don't know so i would ask someone what do you feel like doing look i met a guy i met this really shy guy <laughs> once and uh i don't know it was at the gym i believe and he was watching an aerobics class and he said oh she's cute and i said go tell her she's cute and he looked at me like i was crazy like, what do you what the hell are you talking about go tell her she's cute I said, when the class ends, tell her she's cute. What the hell's wrong with you? And look, he was dying inside. He did not want to do it, right? But he had this pretty big ego, so I messed with his ego. I said, you're not going to do it. And, and I just kept playing with him, playing with him, because he made it conscious to me that there was something inside of him that he wanted to do. And as soon as he did that, I wasn't going to let him off the hook. Well, I don't know. It's probably four years later now. He married her. They just moved into their first house. So, so I would have to ask your audience, what is it you want to do? It doesn't have to be big. Maybe somebody says, you know, I saw somebody playing the ukulele. I'd like to take a ukulele lesson. Go do it. <laughs> what the hell are you thinking about? It's a ukulele. Go take a ukulele lesson. And see what happens. Not that you're going to become a ukulele master. But you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you meet somebody else. Maybe that turns into a passion for some other thing. It's when we stop resisting this little voice in our head that says, that sounds interesting. I might like to do that. That's when we're basically shutting down our ability to plant the seeds of our essence into the world to see what might 
bloom, what might take root and grow. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. 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 Uh, first of all, that's an amazing story. Second of all, I, I want to tell you that Cool Ridge told me to not do the normal show that I wanted to do just because I didn't, I didn't need any more information. I didn't need more knowledge. I just wanted to let everything be free good. flow. And now, <laughs> good, he says, good, he says. And uh, now I'm, I'm happy I did that. Like, but the thing is, is, is happiness wasn't the, the overall goal. It was just to accept, to accept it. Right. And I think that, like you said earlier, self acceptance, well, that often happens to be a byproduct of a happiness, yeah. which is the mind blowing thing is you just got to f- accept ooh, the scars that you go through, the, the, the 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 tribulations the trials and now i kind of want to turn the game around <laughs> uh which i've never done but i want you to ask me a few questions <laughs> ask you. and be the interviewer i'm gonna be the interviewer huh yeah all right <laughs> so yeah so uh okay i'll interview you so so based on our discussion are, are you feeling anything inside that you want to do now that you may have been hesitating to do Yeah, I certainly want to, (laughs) I just want to, I want to become a personal trainer now and just actually do that and, and actually brand myself as, as a, uh, a personal trainer, but who also unlocks the way people perceive life. Uh, just because I'm realizing that I'm just not good at going with the flow of things and I keep being told time and time again, you know, you're a different kid. You know that? Like, you, you speak differently. You talk to people differently. And I keep getting told that, not as like, uh, uh, as a way of like, you know, I'm different, I'm crazy, I'm weird. But more so like, I just operate in the world in a different way. Yeah. And I... uh It's funny. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm done with not yeah, accepting that. it's interesting that. because the adjectives that you used, you know, different weird, all of that. There's another adjective, if you look up the synonyms for that word, and it's unique. Do you see how how we frame things in our minds in a positive or negative way? Hi, you're weird. Hi, you're unique. Isn't that interesting? So, you don't have to frame anything up because you don't have to be judged by the world. The only thing that you should be judged by is yourself. Are you doing the things you want to do? Are you pushing through the barriers that the external world is putting on you and doing the things you want? And and that's what I like about people like you. I mean, that's what kind of inspires me is that you just, you feel something and I, I got a feeling that I know you. My guess is you're going to go do this. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it's the whole reason why I started this podcast. I just wanted to, first of all, uh, tell my story and share other people's stories and make people feel less alone. And um, it's the whole reason why I've even thought about like, hey, like you don't have to go and wake up at 5 a.m. to be successful. You can wake up whenever you want and actually do the things that you want to do rather than doing the things (laughs) that uh, people believe that you need you to do, so right. but actually like following my you own path. You are so right. Because, <laughs> oh, dude, because no way. Su- <laughs> no, because, look, because success is how you define it, not how anyone else defines it. That's why what you just said was the most important, and most powerful thing that's been said on this whole podcast. You can do what you want. And be successful because guess what? Success is doing what you want. Yeah. I'll let you you Uh, on that one. You gave me that one. (laughs) Thanks for letting me, you know, um, I guess it's just all about uh, what I believe is, is first and foremost, 
being lazy, but being lazy on your own terms. Like when I say the word lazy, most people think of lazy as like, oh God, that person's not working hard at the thing. They're just like, they get up when they want, but I actually find lazy as a strength. It's walking in the room and uh, actually doing things with effortless strides, you know, having yeah, this exactly. sort of ability to not really try hard at all. And then I also follow another rule, which is constantly scratching my own itch, being curious and not being curious just analytically, but being curious by putting myself in the game, by trying something, by uh, putting some some skin in the game, either by spending too much money on something that I shouldn't have or maybe asking a stupid question or maybe asking a really smart question because who well, knows call, I'll, like, I'll what's going to happen. crazy author and see if you'll be on your podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> this... I just want uh, anyone that's listening right now, you right now that's listening right now that needs to hear this, that Tom is not an easy person to get a hold of. <laughs> Tom is a person that is, is unique uh, in a good, a great way. Uh, when you go on his website, it's it's nothing like the normal website. When you listen to his <laughs> every single speech that you have is not a speech that, Oh, you know, I'm just going to walk away with that and click on the next speech. Like, all right, this is, I guess this is my definition of you. I wasn't able to just click next onto the next <laughs> TED talk. I had to search you down and really like dive deep with everything that you've put out there into the world just so I could uh, fall into a certain way of thinking just because I love the way you think. But now that I've learned more about you, it's not about, being you it's rather just operating in a different way operating in in a way that's that's you yeah operating and that's that's what it comes down to operating as you and you know what allowed you to do that and you see what doesn't allow other people to discover is that they're not curious they're in a hurry and they're in a hurry to make life fit the story that they have in their head and if something doesn't fit they just push it aside and they keep moving with you, you see something, it turns on your curious mind. You want to understand it. You want to dig deeper into it. You want to see if there's some insight that you haven't really discovered yet. And so you dig and you look. That's the kind of minds we need in this world because this other mind of everyone being certain about what they believe in and pissed off at everyone that doesn't believe what they believe is not going to serve us well in the long term. You know that. Yeah. Well, dude, this has been uh I would want to I would love to talk to you for the next uh, 14,000 hours, <laughs> but I know you're a busy man. And I've probably overspoken more than I should have. I wanted to actually listen a lot more during this uh but I just I don't know. I guess I wanted this to be a conversation. I just let no, it be. No, I liked it. I, uh, I, and uh, that's I really. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed thank it. Thank you. Oh, dude. <laughs> yes. This was, this is incredible. Uh, I want, I, I'm just so happy to like let go, man. It's just Isn't so it? hard to let go sometimes. And it, it, it feels is. great, doesn't yeah. it? That's what I'm telling you. Let go. That's what I'm trying to tell everybody. Let go. Stop worrying about it. You're not going to get out of here alive anyway. Nobody is judging you. Trust me. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, too, they're too busy thinking about themselves. So just go do the things that turn you on. Do it. Be compassionate. Be creative. Be curious like you are. And you'll have an amazing life. Yeah. it's You know, and it's sick to laugh at some of those things because some there is that one person right now that's going, okay, well, I'll just leave everything to be then. <laughs> and the beauty, the beauty of it is there's, there's only probably one key to success and that's consistency. And look at the consistency in your life and really go and say, when I've had consistency, have I seen success? And I guarantee the answer will be yes. So just letting go and being consistent in the letting go gives me a new way of just going, hey, like 
Let it be, bro. Got, Let it you, be. You I mean, it. uh, it's what it comes Absolutely. down to. I've really had a great time. Um, right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to stay connected. I also, if you want, I mean, I know, I know you're not really a person that's trying to get uh, incredible, if, uh, I guess, fame. But if people do want to find you, where can they find you? <laughs> well, they can go to uh, IamKeats.com. I A M K E A T S to see what uh, the whole I am Keats movement is all about. You know, and I want to say I'm sorry to actually say I don't know if you want incredible fame. I'd be putting words in your mouth. So uh, go find him, though. He's not hard to find. If you just type in Tom Hazaker on Google, easily found. If you want to watch his TED Talk, just do it. Just go for it. Seriously, you're going to love it. You're also going to love the way you start looking at life and that comes down to perception. And so um, anything that you, I I do like to ask this one question, okay? okay? This one question, or it's not really a question, it's more of a fill in the blank. We'll end end on this one. I'm just, I'm excited. Let's do it. So the oddest thing happens to someone when they realize that blank. Fill in the blank. The oddest thing happens to someone when they realize that everything in culture and society is all make-believe. People have made it up. It's not real. And you can make up something better, more empowering, more compassionate. We're making it up as we go. Once you realize that, nothing will stop you from making up something that makes your life great. You, you have it right there, right there. You, just you. That's it. Thank you so much again, Tom, for being on Scratch Your Thanks, Logan. Appreciate it, man. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to click off, so the recording's just going to stop, but it just needs a couple of seconds to upload your feed, so just letting you know. All right, well, I'll, I'll keep my phone on so that it uploads, and uh, stay in touch, okay? Let me know what you're up to. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. All right, I, well, this, this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. I agree. Same, same here. Thank you. Definitely. I will... All right, well, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch with Tom Aziger and I. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. Uh, It means the world to me, and just by listening means that you are a supporter of the show, and I really, really appreciate that. If you want to pay me a compliment, if you think this show had any value or inspiration, and now that we know the word inspiration is just, let's face it, it's not anything you're gonna do whatever you feel like doing you're gonna do exactly what you feel like doing in the next moment or the next moment but if you feel like paying me a compliment please share this episode with someone that you think needs to listen to this and if you feel like you want to go above and beyond because wow you just want to converse with me please email me logan at logantylernelson.com or you can leave a review and I'll get in touch with you there. So thank you and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and always remember, you matter and you're enough.